In spite of China's significant accomplishments in lunar exploration, there are concerns over the possibility of a successful collaboration between the European Space Agency, ESA, and China on the Chang'e mission development in the future. In the event of geopolitical tensions or revisions to strategic plans, our relationship can come to an end. The Chang'e probe was a spectacular spacecraft that was launched on May 3, 2024. It was the first time that a probe had ever successfully explored the dark side of the moon. However, political circumstances, notably those involving Russia, have resulted in the reorganization of space alliances. As a result, the European Space Agency and ESA is currently concentrating on the Gateway and Artemis missions, which has brought the importance of international collaboration in space exploration to a crucial level. As we investigate the potential consequences of this breakup and what it means for future lunar endeavors, we ask that you remain with us throughout this process. The relationship between the Chinese and Europeans has been marked by many milestones and great achievements in their joint effort to better understand the moon. Over the years, this collaboration, which started as a project between two organizations with similar objectives but different approaches, has been a fascinating journey filled with significant milestones and impressive accomplishments. Both sides entered into this partnership with the goal of unearthing more about our closest celestial body. Each mission they participated in contributed valuable data to lunar science, providing insights never before collected by humans from such a variety of places. In addition to the detection of negative ions, the European Space Agency and ESA and China have made substantial contributions to global understanding. This has facilitated the exchange of data and knowledge between the two parties, resulting in a more profound understanding of the moon and its surroundings. Specifically, the discoveries from this trip have provided valuable knowledge for future lunar expeditions, among other things. These missions conducted by the European Space Agency demonstrate the significance of international collaboration in attaining significant scientific advancements however successful was Chang'er mission or fruitful. These partnerships were between ESA and China. Still, there may arise some factors considering that such collaboration might come to an end. Many sectors, including space exploration, are affected due to the complex situation created by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which has also impacted negatively towards international cooperation in different areas, particularly those relating to outer space activities. Following the embargo for space cooperation with Russia, the European Space Agency, ESA, finds itself greatly impeded in terms of capacity to work on projects involving collaborations with Russians. An example that can be used here is the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, where Russia acts as a significant partner through close collaboration with China being led by her as well. Given this conflict, the European Space Agency, ESA, does not intend to participate in the International Launcher rocket system, thus indicating how global politics may influence the direction taken by space exploration or dynamics associated with it. The situation fostered after the introduction of sanctions against Moscow puts additional difficulty, as well as political sensitivity, towards further working jointly with Beijing over Russian-based ventures. In addition to the factors that have previously been highlighted, there are additional factors that are related to strategic shifts within ESA that contribute to the possibility of the possible termination of collaboration between them and China. These events are supplementary to the ones that have been mentioned above, but they are not exclusive to them either. They include recent developments that have led to a shift in the strategic focus of the European Space Agency on the Gateway and Artemis programs, which are primarily driven by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, but have a closer alignment with the interests of member states. At the same time that the Artemis program is working toward the concept of sending humans back to the moon to establish a permanent presence there, Gateway is working toward the establishment of a space station that will orbit around the surface of the moon in order to provide support for sustainable exploration. Participation in these initiatives showcases how committed the European Space Agency is 
towards international projects that foster collaboration while aligning them with their long-term objectives, as well as those of its member states. It reflects this organization's decision based on the current situation and desire to strengthen relationships with other foreign partners, especially from Europe and North America, where most of such ventures are concentrated. Therefore, when making the choice between continuously working together with China and giving priority on above-mentioned programs, it clearly demonstrates the strategic shift brought about by these circumstances. The possible discontinuation of cooperation between the European Space Agency and China for fear of the future of the Moon mission. China will go on with its ambitions of sending Chang'e 7 and Chang'e 8 to explore in-situ resource utilization, as well as the lunar south pole, even if it does it alone without ESA's participation, which is much expected after this move from them. But there could be some impact on these programs' success, since no, any other part of technology and science has been contributed by the Europeans, who were equally involved at this stage too. This might lead to various international organizations taking an uncoordinated approach toward exploring the moon, where they may launch separate missions that do not relate to each other because they are fragmented. When things are done in pieces, chances for working together will be missed, as well as wasting energy through repetition, plus poor use of resources due to lack of coordination among different institutions involved in such kind projects being divided like this one here now. So always look into enabling environment fostered through robust agreements. Frameworks globally should address all geopolitical issues during times like these, when everything looks impossible around us. However, people still try their best until something positive comes out from somewhere, but what can we say? The way countries work together in space is changing, and this has bigger effects on space policy and relations. This can be seen in the increasing number of regionalized or strategic alliances that are being created in space, such as the members of the Artemis Accords and partners to the International Long Range Space System, ILRS. These transitions may result in an environment that is both competitive and cooperative at the same time, an environment in which many groups work toward their own goals while simultaneously engaging in scientific exchanges and joint ventures with one another. We are now aware of the breakthrough partnership between the European Space Agency and China in the Chang'e project. That's all for this video.